Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things. Our older women need to be teachers of good things. Those good things are Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Because those good things that you need to teach your daughter, that you need to teach your son, is this right here. Let's get that. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. And that's what's good, the commandments of God. That's because right. our aged women, Neil, you're an aged woman. You would teach the younger women this as well. Read on. Uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Because the majority of women today are not obedient to their own husbands. Not only that, but growing up, because, you know, what our, what our fathers did, that sometimes the women will blame the child. They're like, oh, you're just like your dad. They say that a lot, and it's that. That's why the scripture says that the aged women have to teach the younger women how to love their children, to not blame the child for what the father did, but raise him right, so that way he can grow up and be nourished with the laws of God, so that way he don't make the same mistakes. That's what we need to do instead of, because words can also break the spirit of a child as well. We can use it to build them up and break them down. So you have to use those words carefully. You know? That the word of God be not blasphemed. Because God gives us instructions on how to build our household. So watch this. Hey, hey brother, what's your name? Tony? Okay, all praises, all praises. We'll talk with you. So, Leah, I'm going to give you another commandment. Give me uh, Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And give me the Sabbath day. Because um, a lot of the times when we first come into the truth, we think we're alone. That's what me and my brother thought the same way because we was raised together. We found out the truth at the same time. Right. So we thought we were alone. So it, there was no eyes around us. So we felt as if we could have done whatever we did. So coming together is what really built us up. Congregating, which God commands us to do. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. It says, gather ourselves together. And one way of us gathering together, give me Leviticus chapter 23. God gives us a day to gather together. Do you happen to know what that day is? What? Sunday? How about you, brother? Saturday? What, what's Saturday? What is it called? It's about, exactly, the Sabbath day. That's because, right. because Sunday was authorized by the Roman Catholic Church. They disbanded Saturday worship and made it Sunday worship. That's not ordained by God. Give me, before you grab that, give me Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. 31, verse 16. Because people would say, oh, you can worship God any day. But there's a specific way God says on how you're supposed to worship Him on the Sabbath day. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you, and I'm going to ask you whether or not can we worship God every day because we can keep his commandments every day but on a specific day on his seventh day there's laws within it read that exodus chapter 31 verse 15 16 16 wherefore the children of israel you come from the tribe of levi they come from the tribe of asher it says the children of israel and brother what tribe you come from also levi read on wherefore the children of israel shall keep the sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. It says to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. Had, do a generation stop? No, it continues. So is the Sabbath still here? We don't. Throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Do you happen to know what perpetual means? Exactly, forever. Read. It is a sign. It, it is a what? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So it is a sign. That's how you really show you love God. When you're keeping the Sabbath day and his commandments, he, he knows you're taking that step to show him you love him. He says, it is a sign. This is, I can actually see that you're my child. When I see you congregating on the Sabbath day. Right. Now let's get that, Leviticus chapter 23. Because on the fly, you'll see our address. The school, the new school is opening up. You have the address, you can give us a call. Whenever you feel like coming, um, 
just give us a car and give us the notification because you, you have to be a minor superior. We? Okay. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done. It's, it's, it's going to what? Once you start here, six days work shall be done. It's speaking about the Sabbath, read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day, the Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation. Do you know what the word convocation means? You happen to know what the word convocation means? Convocation. It means a gathering. A holy gathering means a separate gathering only for the children of Israel on the Sabbath day. So he says you have to come together. That's a law. Read on. Ye shall do no work therein. So there's no working on the Sabbath day. Now watch this. Give me Amos chapter 8 verse 5. Because in the Sabbath day, and also Deuteronomy 16 and 16, or Exodus 16, Excellent. about no seething, boiling, boiling and seething. Excellent. Exodus? All right, let's get that. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Because this is a law pertaining to the Sabbath day. Because remember, people say, oh, you can worship God any day. But this is a law within the Sabbath day. Read that. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Let's get that first. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5. Saying, when will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat? They said, when will the Sabbath and new moon be gone so we can sell? We? Making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for the silver, or for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes. So they be like, man, when is the Sabbath day going to be gone so I could go sell, so I could go buy? Letting you know what on the Sabbath day we couldn't do. We couldn't do what? I can't buy or sell. If I could serve God, if I could worship God every day according to his Sabbath day, I wouldn't be able to. Because I, I have to, because the law says six days work shall be done. Give me that in Exodus. Because if you can't buy and sell, how could you sustain your family? You wouldn't be able to. You can't work. So if you can worship God on any day and every day, you can't work every day. You can't buy and sell every day. That's why God says on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to buy, you're not supposed to sell, you're not supposed to work. Think about it. The economy depends on us. Right. It really depends on us. If we if we decide to say, you know what, all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're not buying from Walmart. Walmart will close down. Right. They depend on us. Right. If we say, look, hey, if we're gonna buy anything, you have to sell it 50% off to us. If you want us to go into your stores, we have that power to have the earth move the way we want it to. Right. But we have to come together according to God's word. Right. Read that. Exodus chapter 16, verse 22. Huh? And it came to pass, and it came this, to pass. This is, sorry, this is another law within the Sabbath day, read that. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, gather twice as much bread, two armors for one man, and all the rulers, hey, right and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, that, and said saying. unto him, unto them, this is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. And what's your name, brother? What we're going over is the Sabbath day. What's your name? DeAndre? All right, so what we're going over is the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to buy. We're not supposed to sell. We're not supposed to work. You know what day the Sabbath day fall on? All praises. Now, hold on. This, so you can know what you need to do now. Read on. Bake that which you will bake today. So he says the Sabbath day is approaching. Bake what you're going to bake today, read. And see that ye will see. You know what see means? It means to boil. So it says, cook what you're going to cook today, read. And see that we that you will see. Huh? And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to keep until the, mor until the morning. So he says, whatever you cook before the Sabbath day, hold it down till the Sabbath day come. Let you know on the Sabbath day you're not allowed to do what? You're not supposed to be cooking on a Sabbath day. Right. You see those laws? So think about that. So think about it. If you can worship God every day. Right. So think about it. If you can worship God every day. I can't cook every day. 
So you can't do that. There's only a specific day. That's Saturday. You're not supposed to buy. You're not supposed to sell. You're not supposed to cook. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath day. That, right. Those laws were only given to the children of Israel. Right. And that's a sign between you and your God. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. That's why it's so important because God didn't give these commandments to everybody. Who did he give those commandments to? Who's his people? His followers. Let's read that. Watch this. We're gonna get we're gonna go throughout the whole Bible, and what you're gonna find out is God is only for one group of people, and that's the children of Israel. That's He's right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read that. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Huh? And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He says, You're gonna know that I'm among the children of Israel. Read. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. No, he's everybody's God. And none else. You understand that? Read that from the top again. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Psalms 147 and verse 19. He says, I am the Lord your God, and nobody else's. So can anybody say, oh, pick up the Bible and say, oh, that's my God? If God said it himself, that I'm the God of Israel and nobody else's? Can anybody say that? Down to the world. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org